I may live in Orlando, but I've already been to Disneyland three times this year. These are the best things and the happiest place on earth. Hi, Mam Fam, and welcome to another episode of Molly's Favorite Things, the show where I take you around the theme parks and share my favorite thing in every land. Once again, I have to remind you, it's like Oprah's favorite things, but I still haven't been able to give you guys all cars yet. I promise I'm working on it. Hopefully though, going to Walt's Original Park will make up for it. Today we are headed to Disneyland Park where I'm gonna to go to each land and point out my favorite things. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it's Disneyland, so these are some tough decisions ahead. From classic attractions to the best theme park snacks, these are my favorite things. If this is your first time watching Molly's Favorite Things, this is how it works. Instead of just picking 10 favorite things across Disneyland, I go land by land and pick my favorite thing in each one. Why? I don't know. I'm competitive and it's more fun. It'd be a lot easier just to make a list, but what's the challenge in that? So today when I got to Disneyland, I grabbed a trusty map, I grabbed my handy dandy pencil, and I got to work deciding what is the best of the best in Disneyland. Now, Disneyland is quite hard to choose because you've got lands that are jam-packed with attractions like Fantasyland, and then you've got lands like Galaxy's Edge, which is the same as Walt Disney World, so what am I going to pick? Now, I will tell you the choices might be a little different from the classic person coming to Disneyland because as someone that lives in Walt Disney World's backyard, my choices here in Disneyland tend to be things you can't do in Walt Disney World or the better versions of things you can do in Walt Disney World, so we got some surprises in store. Welcome, friends, to Main Street, USA. It's just, oh, my heart explodes with happiness and pixie dust every time I walk into this park. This is the park, the original one. This is where Walt and the original Imagineers built everything. I, oh, it just, it feels nostalgic just walking in here. So if I could give the award to the feeling of Main Street USA, I would. Of course, Main Street USA is home to a lot of shopping and dining, as well as a couple of different attractions. For starters right here, when you walk in, you've got Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. This is the original Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln that Walt Disney and the Imagineers presented at the 1964-65 New York World's Fair. Absolutely incredible. Walt's favorite president was Abraham Lincoln. And this was such an advancement in animatronics that people thought it was a real person, so they threw pennies at him see if he'd flinch. And while Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln doesn't top my list, I will say this exhibit right here in the front does, because that is the bench where Walt Disney dreamt up Disneyland at Griffith Park in Los Angeles. This is also one of the merry-go-rounds that he would watch his daughters ride, and this is sitting on this bench. He thought, I wish there was a place that adults and kids could go to have fun, and that's part of what started Disneyland. They also in the lobby here have different exhibits. Right now it's the D100, the 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney Company. So they've got all sorts of things over the past 100 years from animation to theme park creation. And as a theme park nerd, I really enjoy this too. Like I said, a lot of the rest of what you're gonna find on Main Street USA is shopping. You've got the Emporium. I do really like the Magic Shop because that's something unique to Disneyland. You've got some dining options, the Starbucks is here, you've got Carnation Cafe, another one of the top contenders for the list, Jolly Holiday Bakery. This is where you can get that famous grilled cheese and tomato soup, one of the best meals in Disneyland. And I also have a soft spot for the Matterhorn Macaroon. May have to get one of those just to double check it's not on top. And then across the way, you've got City Hall and over the fire station, you have Walt Disney's actual apartment. So another thing on my list for favorite thing in Disneyland is the light in Walt Disney's apartment. It never goes out as a symbol that Walt is always here with us. Minnie! Maybe Minnie's my favorite thing on Main Street USA. I'm gonna say hi to her, hold on, excuse me. You look so cute! Look at your fancy outfit, your bracelet. Oh, you like those? They The Dapper Dans are playing underneath the fire station, which is also making me think that's my favorite thing. I've got like nine favorite things on Main Street USA. If anyone had a scorecard of how quickly I'd cry walking into Disneyland, it was um, three minutes because the Dapper Dans are playing underneath Walt's apartment with the light and they started singing when you went to Chapata Star and then they did Walt's opening day speech. So things are going great. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Here on Main Street, you will say, age relives fond memories of the past. And youth, 
savors the challenge and the promise of the future. And may your visit today bring you and yours joy and inspiration. Main Street's also a great spot to grab some of your favorite sweet treats. There's an ice cream parlor as well as the Candy Palace where you can get your bakery case goodies like your Rice Krispie treats and your cake pops, your apples. My favorite is the churro toffee because they don't have that in Walt Disney World and it's delectable. A couple other dining options here. You've got the Plaza, which is a character breakfast in the morning with Minnie and the gang. You never really know who's gonna show up there. And it's known for its fried chicken during lunch and dinner. Also on this side, you've got the Little Red Wagon, which is corn dogs, hand dipped corn dogs. I don't know why corn dogs are actually delicious here in Disneyland versus Walt Disney World, but they are. And they're definitely a classic Disneyland food. Welcome inside the Jolly Holiday Bakery. This is just the cutest little bakery spot on the end of Main Street, USA. Jolly Holiday is of course themed after Mary Poppins and I love the little nods to the film in here, like the penguin waiters. In this case, you've got the robin that is similar to the spoonful of sugar. Speaking of the spoonful of sugar right here, you've got the carousel and then this painting right here has got some of the most famous lines from the film, like winds in the east, a mist coming in, like something brewing about to begin. This is where you can get, again, that uh, famous Jolly Holiday combo, which is the toast and cheese sandwich with tomato basil soup. They have a birria toast and cheese as well right now. It's fantastic. They've got great desserts. You can also get a variety of coffees here, including cold brew, lattes, etc. But I'm here for one reason and one reason only. Here it is, the cutest little macaroon. And I know the sun is making a weird shadow, but look, there's the real Matterhorn. It is adorable. now. To be very clear, this is a macaroon, which is a coconut-based cookie, and then the snow is white chocolate. A macaron, not to be confused, is the French cookie. They sell those here as well. They have the classic Mickey one that's raspberry. It's got fresh raspberries as well as the filling, and then they have a seasonal as well. But macaroon, macaron, different cookie. Let's get into this one, though. First things first, you have to like coconut to like this treat because it's coconut flavored. The white chocolate part does make it pretty sweet, but I think it's pretty well balanced with the coconut part. I prefer the plain part without the white chocolate. It is a smaller snack, but I still think it's pretty shareable because of how dense it is. And it's just another classic Disneyland thing. So this is my favorite thing to eat on Main Street. But ultimately, the winner has got to be the Disneyland Railroad. If you know much about Disney history, you probably know that Walt Disney loved trains and many of the Imagineers and friends closest to him often joked that Walt Disney only built Disneyland so he could get a bigger train set. So the railroads around the world are an homage to Walt and of course this is the original one. This is the one that Walt Disney himself got to jump in the engines of. Plus on the Tomorrowland to Main Street USA leg, you actually get to go through the dinosaur diorama from again the 1964-65 New York World's Fair. It was part of an experience called the Ford Magic Skyway, which was actually the predecessor to the Omnimover. So it's so cool that you get that little bit of history with the train. There are four train stops, of course here on Main Street USA, New Orleans Square, Toontown, and Tomorrowland. But riding the train is so relaxing and it's such a quintessential Disney thing and it's one of Walt's favorite things. So that means it tops my list too. Let's go on the train. There is a revered Indian shaman sharing his story with those in the Great River Valley below. right along into Adventureland. This land has a couple of classic attractions as well as more good food. You're gonna hear me say that for Everland because Disneyland is perfect. But starting off strong, you've got the Enchanted Tiki Room. This is the original home to audio animatronics in 1963. I talked a lot about this in the Disneyland Secrets video about the Walt Disney Why Aren't They Breathing story. Really fun, but what's really charming about going to the original Enchanted Tiki Room is the fact that they've got the Tiki Juice Bar as part of the Tiki Courtyard. That means you can get your classic pineapple Dole Whip with the intention of bringing it into the Tiki Room, which is just such a quintessential Disneyland thing. So that whole experience, 
definitely on my list. Also in Adventureland, if you want to branch out and get even more flavors of Dole Whip, you've got the Tropical Hideaway. This is where you're going to have multiple different flavors. The only thing I think is better about Disney World than Disneyland's Adventureland is the fact that we have coconut in Disney World. They don't have that flavor yet here, but they do have some of the original Tiki Birds on the Tiki Terrace, and it's a really good spot to grab dessert. Also, the Jungle Cruise opening day attraction inspired by Walt Disney's travels around the world, now known for its punny skippers. That is here in Adventureland as well. Not gonna lie, this is one of the times that being a Disney worlder, Disneyland's Jungle Cruise isn't that different in my opinion, so I'm probably not gonna pick it because it's something I can essentially do when I'm at home in Disney World. But definitely a must do when you're coming to the Disney parks. For me, Adventureland comes down to two things meat sticks and indiana jones of course the indiana jones adventure is a thrill ride here in disneyland it's been around since the 90s but it holds up you are going on a quest through the temple of the forbidden eye and of course everything goes wrong but luckily indiana jones is there to save the day it has the same ride vehicle as dinosaur so it's that jeep that's on hydraulics that's been functioned to make it feel like it's bumpy and you're rocking and you're going on this amazing quest You've got that incredible Indiana Jones soundtrack. It's a must do. Absolutely one of my favorite rides in the park. But there's also meat sticks. Meat sticks can be found at Bengal Barbecue. It is this cute little walk up stand right across from Indiana Jones that specializes in skewers. They've got a couple beef, chicken, bacon wrapped asparagus, pork belly, have a few other options as well. But it is one of my favorite things to eat in all of Disneyland. Highly recommend mobile ordering because the line gets very, very long also recommend mobile ordering early because the time slots fill up so if you think you're going to want to eat here set a mobile order as soon as you can you can always adjust it based on availability but at least you'll have it locked and loaded you know what i'm going to need to eat one of these to make sure i'm making the right decision the meat sticks are here now this one's my favorite it's the banyan beef uh, it's a spicy sauce on the beef i get, always get extra sauce i also love the safari skewer which is bacon wrapped asparagus with a fresh lemon but for science, I also got the Bengal beef skewer this time, which I've never had. It's in a sweet sauce. So for science, meat science, if you will, I'm going to figure out which is the better beef skewer. First up, the classic. It's so good. I love that the spicy sauce actually has some heat to it. The meat is cooked perfectly. There's that nice char on the outside. It aggravates me that this is just from a stand in Disneyland. Why? There's no reason Disney World shouldn't have this. Now the sweet beef. Obviously the meat is cooked equally well. I really like that sweet sauce. I do like the spicy one more because I'm a spicy gal, but I think the real answer is going to be to dip the sweet one into the spicy. It's not sickly sweet, it's just more like a teriyaki glaze. You can't go wrong, just depends on preference. And now finishing this off with a bacon wrapped asparagus. Mm. I love that you get the fresh lemon to squeeze on top. This is so far above and beyond like theme park food, like cheeseburgers and chicken nuggets. It's just excellent. It's a, it's a very top contender for this land. You know, as delicious as those meat sticks are, one of my favorite eats in Disneyland, it's got to be the Indiana Jones Adventure. This is such a fun ride. It's a must do in Disneyland. It's unlike anything that we have in Walt Disney World. Again, you've got the amazing music, the iconic Harrison Ford lines. The queue is really fun. It's thrilling. They also recently did some updates to Indiana Jones Adventure, which are awesome. There's some new lighting effects and projection effects. And it really just took this already amazing attraction that's been around since the 90s and plussed it up and gave it a fresh new look, making it somehow even better. Unfortunately, it is down right now, which does happen sometimes with this attraction. So we're gonna come back later and hopefully help out Indy. Two hours later. to Nolan Square. This is a land unique to Disneyland. We don't have this one in the Magic Kingdom. Oh my gosh, Princess Tiana's right here. Oh, doesn't she look as pretty as a picture? 
Now, Disney Worlders often get confused by what's located in New Orleans Square, because again, we don't have this out in the Magic Kingdom. For starters, this is where the Haunted Mansion lives, and instead of being themed to an upstate New York manor, it is a southern plantation style home. Now, of course, Haunted Mansion is a classic. This is the original, opened up two years before Walt Disney World and Walt Disney World's version. However, because of space constraints, they don't have all of the same effects that Disney World does. A lot of the most famous rooms, like the library and some of the portraits, are actually part of the queue because they didn't have enough room in the attraction to build them. The only thing I would say is better about Disneyland's Haunted Mansion is Hatbox Ghost. It's an incredible effect that they tried to do in the opening version of Disneyland. It didn't, they ran it for a few weeks. It didn't work right, so they cut it. And finally, decades later, an Imagineer figured out how to do it. They are supposed to be bringing Hatbox Ghost to Walt Disney World though, so that kind of nixes that. However, I am giving a special shout out and an, an honorable mention to Holiday Haunted Mansion, which is when they do the amazing Nightmare Before Christmas overlay for the Halloween and Christmas seasons. It is absolutely incredible. One of the most spectacular things I've seen in a Disney park. And if that was a year round offering, that would take the cake. However, since that's a seasonal overlay, we're not gonna count that. Also part of New Orleans Square is Fantasmic, the nighttime spectacular where Mickey must battle the greatest power of his imagination. Will the villains take over and turn it into a nightmare or is Mickey's imagination strong enough to save the day? That amazing classic Disney show takes place right here in New Orleans Square. I do really like the version of Fantasmic here. It's got some characters and scenes we don't have in Walt Disney World. For starters, there's a Pirates of the Caribbean unit, Rapunzel is in it, and Hats off to Disneyland for Murphy, the dragon in their version. It's unbelievable how amazing it is. But I've got two other things battling it out for the absolute top spot. You've got a couple different restaurants here in New Orleans Square. One of them is being turned into a Tiana's Palace situation. New Orleans Square is also where you've got French Market. It's got the Blue Bayou, which made the list, is the restaurant inside Pirates of the Caribbean where you can get the famous Monte Cristo. But ultimately for me, New Orleans Square came down to two things. Delicious beignasses, the famous Mickey beignets at the Mint Julep Bar with the Mint Julep, one of my favorite Disney snacks of all time, my favorite sweet Disney treat of all time or Pirates of the Caribbean, my favorite Disney attraction of all time. This is quite a dilemma, but you know what? We're gonna go do both things to decide which one is the winner. Now, at the time of filming this, part of New Orleans Square is under refurbishment as they turn one of the restaurants into Tiana's Palace, like in The Princess and the Frog. I'm so excited. So that's French Market as well as Minjula Bar, and you may know that's where you normally get beignets. However, never fear, they are not gone. They're just currently here at the Royal Street Veranda. This is where you can get a couple other snacks like gumbo, but right now this is the home of your mint juleps and your beignets, and they're still on the border. Now, I will say the Royal Street Veranda definitely has less seating. It's smaller than mint julep bar was, which means it's time for trash can table time. It's trash can table time. Here is the famous mint julep. Now this is non-alcoholic. You can't drink in Disneyland unless you're inside a sit down restaurant or at Oka's. Uh, so this is basically lemonade with mint, a uh, little soda water, delicious. And here are the most delectable treat in Disneyland, the Mickey beignet. But they're not ready yet. You know what we gotta do. Gotta evenly coat that powdered sugar and oh, it's perfect. Mm. Mm. They're just so perfect. Light, warm, pillowy, doughy, got that powdered sugar on them. They're definitely sweet, but they're not like sickly or artificial sweet. It just doesn't get better. Wash it down with our mint julep. It tastes like lemonade and fresh mint. It is refreshing, it is tasty, tart. Pirates has their work cut out for it. My Disney World friends are probably a little confused at looking at Pirates of the Caribbean here in Disneyland, because as you can tell, it's not in Adventureland. It's here in New Orleans Square, obviously. So it's got this kind of New Orleans Southern style architecture, the wrought iron work very different vibe, but also a pretty different attraction. 
This is a much longer version of Pirates of the Caribbean. There's whole sections that we don't have in Walt Disney World. And I just adore this attraction. In fact, many people say this was the perfect Disney attraction. Marty Sklar, an Imagineer, one who ended up being the VP of Imagineering, he was the lead Imagineer over Epcot. He said that Pirates of the Caribbean was the gold standard and that everything through his entire Disney career was measured by the bar that Pirates of the Caribbean set. And I always talk about how I think it's a perfect Disney attraction. Uh, it's a boat ride, which is quintessential Disney. It's family friendly, but it's still thrilling. You've got the animatronics, the song by Exitensio. It's just perfection. I love this fountain in the Pirates queue. It was dedicated for the 30th anniversary of Pirates of the Caribbean, and it says in quotes, the original, and then it says honoring Walt Disney's Buccaneer crew, and then it goes through all the Imagineers that were instrumental in making this attraction, like Exitensio, my favorite Harriet Burns, Mark Davis, Alice Davis, Claude Coates, uh, Yale Gracie, Blaine Gibson, all these incredible people that made this attraction come to life. I love that this is right here. <laughs> All right, after both riding Pirates of the Caribbean and getting beignasses, the winner is, it's a tie. I'm sorry, I can't choose and you can't make me. I made up the rules to this dumb game so I can break the rules to my own dumb game. I simply cannot compare my favorite treat to my favorite ride. This is the last ride that Walt Disney himself got to work on and beignets. You can't compare the two things. I refuse to choose. You can't make me. They're both must-dos in my opinion. So New Orleans Square, congratulations. You're the first land to get two winners. Next up, Critter Country, another land unique to Disneyland. Here you've got some classic attractions, food offerings. First up, this is the home of Disneyland Splash Mountain, at least for now. Splash Mountain, the beloved attraction that sent you down Chickapin Hill with the Brayers being transformed into Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Y'all know that wasn't gonna be my favorite thing choice. I don't love Splash Mountain. And that's being gentle for those of you who do. Not a water ride fan. You actually get wetter here than in Disneyland. Not a fan of the topic of Splash Mountain. Get rid of it, I say. But for those of you who like it, I'm sorry. But also it's gonna be the same ride and now it's gonna include Tiana and music and brand new city art animatronics and it's gonna be awesome. So I cannot wait for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Maybe that one I'll ride. I've never ridden Splash Mountain here in Disneyland. Maybe Tiana will change my mind. Also here in Critter, also here in Critter Country, this is where you've got many adventures of Winnie the Pooh in Disneyland. Classic attraction with Winnie the Pooh and gang. Although the version in Walt Disney World is better in my opinion because you're in the honey pots that actually move and they bounce with Tigger and they float on the water. Here you're just in a more standard ride vehicle. Also here by Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, we've got another bakery shop. You've got a place you can meet Winnie the Pooh and Tigger too. Next to me right here, we've got the Hungry Bear restaurant. This is a quick service barbecue spot. And then we have our winner and Alan's gonna be so excited because it's the Davy Crockett Explorer canoes. The Davy Crockett Explorer Canoes, a classic attraction, almost an opening day ride, but you are literally gonna paddle a canoe around the rivers of America, but it's hilarious. It's got a very Jungle Cruise-esque vibe. Much like the Skippers, your canoe guide is gonna be funny. It's gonna be self-deprecating. It ends up being kind of one of those underrated treats in Disneyland. Alan loves it, so there's not a lot of unique stuff to choose from here. So for me, definitely memories of riding the canoes with Max and Alan are certainly playing a part, but it's one of those rides that you don't expect it to be that fun, and then you ride it and it's hilarious. Just around the river bank, <laughs> just around the <laughs> Greetings from the galaxy far, far away. No, I'm not back at Disney's Hollywood Studios. You just forgot that they have Star Wars Galaxy's Edge here in Disneyland too. Now here's the thing, when I heard they were adding Galaxy's Edge to this park and not that park, I was confused because I was like, is that going to fit? Is that going to make sense? Kind of no, because it theoretically should be attached to Tomorrowland where they've got other Star Wars attractions, but when has that stopped Disney from building Batu? However, of course Disney pulled it off and once you're inside this land, you completely forgot that four seconds ago you saw Winnie the Pooh. It's amazing as always, but it's very, very similar to the one in Hollywood Studios. So again, as a disclaimer, 
as someone who goes to that park a lot, I'm not gonna pick something that's in Disney's Hollywood Studios. So let's get that on the table right now. Yes, we can all agree, Rise of the Resistance is the best thing in this land. It's the best attraction Disney's ever built. It's absolutely incredible. And if you're not someone that goes to Disney World frequently, that should be your number one priority in this land. But I'm gonna pick something that I can't see slash eat in Disney World. Now back to West does have Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run along with Rise of the Resistance. Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run puts you in the cockpit of the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. As you play one of three roles, you can be a pilot, a gunner, or an engineer. Rise of the Resistance puts you in the middle of a battle between the First Order and the Resistance. And again, it is absolutely incredible. It's unbelievable. It's multiple different ride systems, trackless technology, incredible animatronics. Phenomenal, phenomenal attraction, state of the art nothing tops it. As far as other things to do in Galaxy's Edge, they do have Droid Depot where you can build your own droid and Savvy's Workshop where you can build your own lightsaber here. They also have Oga's Cantina, which is the bar DJed by DJ Rex, who used to be the pilot over at Star Tours. Slightly different menu than the one in Disney World, but very similar vibes. I love Oga's Cantina, so I recommend that too. Then you've got some other dining options. You've got Docking Bay 7, the quick service restaurant, the milk stand where you can get your blue milk, Katsaka's Kettle, Ronto Roasters, pretty much everything in Batu and Hollywood Studios is here as well. You've also got the marketplace, but there are two things. There is, may seem small, but the two things that I'm picking for this land are things you cannot do in Hollywood Studios. And first of all, that's meet Boba Fett. For some reason, Disneyland, Star Wars gets better characters than Walt Disney World. They were the first ones to get Mando and the Child. Those characters have since come to Disney's Hollywood Studios. However, Boba Fett is only here, and he's a very cool meet and greet. Also, Fennec Shan, I believe that's her name, from The Mandalorian, she's also here. And the first time that we met those characters, it was such an incredible interaction. We met Fennec Shan, she talked about us, she talked about how we could work for her, and then we met Boba Fett. She actually introduced us to Boba Fett and set us up, and it was such a cool meet and greet experience. Max and Alan were geeking out so hard that I can't help but put them at the top of my list here because it's such a cool character interaction. The second thing is from Cat Sackus Kettle, where in Disney World, I get my beloved space popcorn. They actually don't have that here, but what they do have here are the seasonal hand pies. They're one of the most delicious treats I've ever had in a theme park, and my favorite one is back. So let's go grab it. Say hello to the Jakuin corn chili and cheese pie. It's got roasted poblano peppers, corn, and mozzarella inside of a hand pie with a citrus dipping sauce. We had this when we shot our holiday video and they have brought this treat back. I hope it sticks around because it is fantastic. Mm. Oh my gosh, I kind of forgot how good it is. It is so good for, for just a moment. I thought, what if it isn't as good as I remember? Maybe it was a, all a dream, but it wasn't. It is fantastic. It's flaky crust. You can taste that the corn and the peppers are roasted. Smooth cheese. My only complaint is I wish there was more cheese specifically, but more of the filling in general. I love the citrus dressing as well. I'm not kidding you, these are so good. Max, Alan and I were eating a ton of snacks the day we tried this for the first time, so we just got one to share, and then we went and bought two more immediately because it was amazing. Which leads me to my complaint, because I'm once again asking Disney, why can you have this and cheese bread at Oga's and Boba Fett here, but not in Hollywood Studios? Make it make sense. Please bring us hand pies. Thank you. Howdy folks and welcome to Frontierland. Now this land doesn't have quite as much to offer as some of the other ones we've been to. It doesn't have as many heavy hitters, but there are still some treasures nonetheless. Like all of Disneyland, there are a ton of food options. I feel like there is so much to eat here in Disneyland. It's overwhelming how many different restaurants they have compared to the Magic Kingdom. But you've got the River Bell Terrace, that's a sit-down restaurant. Golden Horseshoe, that's quick service. Also Rancho Del Zocalo, which is quick service Tex-Mex. That to me is the best food in Frontierland and did make the short list here. It's much better than Pecos Bills, which would be the equivalent out in Walt Disney World. Also in Disneyland's Frontierland, there's a tree. It's a petrified tree. It's estimated to be between 55 and 70 million years old. And it was a gift to Mrs. Lillian Disney. And then she made Walt put it in the park. So as like a Disney nerd, I like that kind of fun little touch. This is also one of the places where you can get the famous chimichanga and the infamous breakfast chimichanga at the cart here in Frontierland. Don't forget, if you want the breakfast one, you got to get in here early. You got to like rope drop the chimichanga. It's so popular. You've also got the riverboat here. Now it alternates between the sailing ship Columbia and the Mark Twain riverboat. It'll take you around the rivers of America. You do have Tom Sawyer Island as part of Frontierland here in Disneyland as well. However, they have rethemed part of it. 
For example, here they have the Pirate Cave versus in Disney World where they still have Injun Joe's Cave. But for me, there was a clear-cut winner here. It's the wildest ride in the wilderness, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Yes, there is a Big Thunder Mountain Railroad in Magic Kingdom, but one, this is the original. It opened here first before it opened in Walt Disney World. And two, it's just the better version of it. One, you have Dynamite Goat. I think that is enough of an argument to say this is the better version, but if you're not convinced, let's talk about the explosive dynamite scene. While in Disney World's version, you just get the sound effects, here you actually get to see the dynamite explode with some really great effects. So I love Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. It's one of my favorite Disney rides of all time. It's one of the ones I have the most nostalgic attachment to. And since this is the better version of it, it was an easy pick for Frontierland. Welcome friends, we have made it to my favorite land in Disneyland, Fantasyland. It's for the young and the young at heart. It is so quintessentially Disney. It makes you feel like you're in the 50s again. It's so nostalgic. And that's not just because the ride queues and turnstiles are like this big. It was a different time. Um, but there's so, so much in this land. It's gonna be very, very hard. This is easily the hardest land to pick just one favorite. So let's get into some of the options. First of all, when you're coming in through Sleeping Beauty Castle, you've got the Sleeping Beauty walkthrough. Very unique to Disneyland. You can actually walk through the castle unlike in Walt Disney World. And there's this beautiful diorama. It's so ornate, it's so detailed. It's a little spooky at times, so underrated. That makes my short list because it's such a unique Disneyland thing. You've got the classic Peter Pan's flight. You've got Mr. Toad's wild ride. Obviously Max's favorite also makes my short list. Another just nostalgic Disneyland attraction opening day. And what theme park doesn't need the ride that tells you what happens when you drunk drive, you get hit by a train and you go to hell. It's a classic fairy tale. You've got the Alice in Wonderland dark ride. I love a dark ride through any Disney story. That one has been upgraded with some little pops of technology throughout it. So it's very popular, very cute. Also got the Mad Tea Party, AKA the teacups. You've got Dumbo the Flying Elephant. You've got the Storybook Land Canals, which are so cute and nostalgic and quaint and classic Disneyland. And how many times can I say nostalgic and quaint in this fantasy land section? Uh, but you're gonna get in a little boat and go through the little land where you see miniature versions of some of your favorite fairy tale settings. You've got the Casey Jr. Circus Train that takes you around kind of the storybook canal area and you get a good look at the patchwork quilt uh, flower bed, which is one of Walt Disney's favorite things in Disneyland. You've got the carousel, you've got the nightmare that is Pinocchio's daring journey, the dark ride through Pinocchio, which is easily the scariest Disney film of all time. At one point you literally get called a jackass and are told that you are going to be turned into a donkey and never see your mom again. So it is a nightmare. You've also got Snow White's Scary Adventures. One of my favorites, definitely on my short list, opening day ride puts you through the story of Snow White, the first full length animated feature film of all time but they have updated it since the parks reopened after the pandemic. So it's got these beautiful touches and updates of technology, making it perfect, in my opinion, the perfect way to update these classic attractions, but keep the nostalgic factor. This is also where you're gonna find the original It's a Small World. It also made my short list, not only because I love It's a Small World, but because it is better than the Disney World version yet again. Not only do you get that incredible Mary Blair facade on the outside, but they've actually added in Disney characters into the ride where they would live. So you're gonna have Alice and Peter Pan in the United Kingdom. You're gonna have Mulan in China, Jesse and Woody in the United States. Nemo and Dory in Australia. It is so cute and they're in the Mary Blair doll style. So it's like a little scavenger hunt. So, so sweet. And the final attraction to make my shortlist, the Matterhorn bobsleds. Now, not everyone in the Mayhem fam would agree, looking at you, Max and Alan, but I love the Matterhorn. Yeah, it, is it a chiropractic back adjustment? Yes, but you know what? I've said it before, this is a first of its kind steel roller coaster. Bob Gerd, the main Imagineer, had to teach himself advanced math and trigonometry and physics to be able to make the roller coaster work. I love it, I giggle hysterically the entire time. That's also a top contender. 
Let's talk about some of the other things in Fantasyland. For starters, you've got the Tale of the Lion King show, a live action show that features the music from The Lion King. Very, very beautiful show. I don't love it quite as much as Festival of the Lion King in Disney World, but I love that music and the performers are amazing. There's this great mashup between Be Prepared and I Just Can't Wait to Be King. That's awesome. Plus, there's a great snack stand up there that's got some yummy snacks, including a Burberry spiced popcorn, which is an African spice blend. That's fantastic. So those things make my short list as well. We've got a couple other little snack stands around as well as the Red Rose Tavern, which is a Beauty and the Beast quick service themed restaurant. The food I've had there is fine, but I do want to give them a shout out because they always have iced coffee on mobile order. And then in addition to that, you've got some other snack stands and merchandise locations. Shout out to the Mad Hatter shop near the Alice in Wonderland section. Not only is it a really cute shop, but they sell a ton of ears, so you know I love that. Also in Fantasyland, a little bit closer to the castle, you've got the princess meet and greet area where you can meet your favorite princesses and sometimes villains as well. There's also a small theater there that does retellings of classic Disney stories like Rapunzel, as well as Maurice's Treats, which sells things like bagel twists and their version of a LeFou brew, which is a little bit sweeter here at Disneyland. But with so many great choices, what does one possibly pick? This is truly the hardest land because on my must-do list for Disneyland is 75% of what I just said. For me, the absolute must-dos in this land, Snow White's Enchanted Wish, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, I love Casey Jr.'s Circus Train, I love the Storybook Canals, Must Do It's a Small World, I love the tale of the Lion King, and I absolutely adore the Matterhorn, plus snacks, plus coffee. Mm. You know what? I've declared it a two-way tie. At least I didn't make it a nine-way tie, as I was considering. My two favorite things in this land, Two opposite ends of the spectrum, the Matterhorn bobsleds and Snow White's Enchanted Wish. Fortunately, the Matterhorn is closed for refurbishment right now, so I'm not able to ride it today, but please enjoy some footage from previous rides. It is just so fun. I laugh and I scream and I giggle and I love the updated Yeti and it's just so much fun and it's a controversial pick because it's painful, but I love it. Snow White's Enchanted Wish, like I said, a perfect blend of old and new. It is the original animated film. It's an original Disneyland ride. It's a must do for me every time I go. It just warms my heart and brings a tear to my eye. So let's go check out Snow White. Welcome to Toontown. It is so, so cute. I feel like I am a child right now. It is absolutely adorable. It's so bright and colorful. I am so glad that Disneyland still has Toontown and it looks better than ever with the recent refurbishment. Now, to me, the real star of the show here in Toontown is just being in Toontown. Everywhere you look, it's adorable. It feels like you're in a cartoon. Everything from the detail, like Mickey's mailbox, to the facade of the rolling hills behind us, to the jokes about who's running Toontown. Like if you look on the trash cans, it's got the uh, brooms from Fantasia and the mops. It's just adorable everywhere. But let's talk about what you can do here. For first starters, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is here in Toontown, the newest attraction to open in Disneyland. The ride is almost exactly the same as the version in Hollywood Studios. However, the queue is so, so cute. It's themed to be at the El Capitoon Theater, and it is full of sight gags and jokes, and it is amazing. I'm sorry. The BGM is like a boppy version of the DuckTales theme song right now. This place is so cute, I wanna scream. So Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway, I think a perfect family attraction, certainly on my short list. Also back here, you've got Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Spin. That is a Roger Rabbit themed attraction. It does spin. It's a pretty wackadoo attraction, just like the film. 
You've also got Chippendale's Gadget Coaster. This is your starter coaster here, similar to the Barnstormer. And then beyond that, you've got like the Toontown aesthetic. You've got Donald's Duck Pond, the boat play area. You've got Goofy's How to Play Yard. You just have the Toontown grass. You've got Mickey and Minnie's houses that you can go through and meet Mickey and Minnie. There's tons of characters that come around here. You can meet Pete first time ever. Plus there's Cafe Daisy where you can get some snacks as well as Good Boy Grocers where you can get picnic baskets and have a picnic out here on the grass. So what's the winner? You know, part of me wants to give it to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway because I think that attraction is so, so cute and the theming here is on point, but I gotta give it to Mickey and Minnie's houses. I am nine-year-old Molly in Toontown right now. Their houses are so cute and they're so full of detail. Plus, when you meet Mickey here in Disneyland in his house, you don't know what outfit he's gonna be put on. He's at his house. He could be wearing anything, including his Steamboat Willie look, which I've never seen and I'm dying to see at some point in my life. So. Maybe that'll happen on this trip, but this land is so cute. It is, it is perfect. Let's go to Mickey's house, shall we? All right, we're walking into the house of Mouse. The doggy door with Pluto. He's got a picture of him and Walt. And look, he's trying to shove all his stuff in the closet. And if you look, his bumper stickers are for Paris and Japan. My gosh, I want to scream. Look, he's got a, the Steamboat Willie ship in a bottle. Stop it. He's got this old picture of him and Walt and then old Mickey and Minnie plushes. Oh my God. And then he's got all these references to different Mickey cartoons, like Mickey and the Beanstalk. Here on Mickey's bulletin board, there are different nods to character. Goofy's left him a message. Minnie's left him a message. The Brave Little Tailor, that's a Mickey cartoon shop, has left him a message. His washing machine, Toonie fa Fabric Hardener. Oh my God. Oh, I'm gonna, it's so cute in here. Mouse and Glow Floor Wax. We made it. We gotta go meet Mickey. We made it through his house. We're in the movie barn area. Look at his garden and Pluto's doghouse. Mickey's movie barn. Look at these little chickens. <laughs> Mickey, are you here? <gasps> Mickey! Look at the costumes. You see Minnie's classic dress, the band conductor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hi, Mickey. How are you? Thank you for letting us in your house again. It's so cute. Oh, thank you, Mickey. I have a request for a picture. Can we take a picture in your mirror? Yeah? <laughs> Thank you, Mickey. You look great, as always. Well, unfortunately, it was classic Mickey, but fortunately, it's always great to meet Mickey Mouse. And as you leave, you can see Mickey's absolutely adorable car. It's just so cute in here. I love it. Greetings from the future. Your future. Wait, I'm not an Epcot. I'm obviously in Tomorrowland, which is the final land on our adventure today. Not gonna lie to you, Tomorrowland, one of my least favorite lands. There's not a ton of standout things, but let's go through some of the options. You've got the Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage, which I actually am pleasantly surprised by. I think it's really cute and fun. A lot of people think it's really claustrophobic, which I can understand. Wow, Disney animatronics have really improved over the years, haven't they? Just look at those seagulls. But then if you take a look at the more advanced animatronic, the duck, it's incredible. They look almost real. You've got Autopia, which is similar to Tomorrowland Speedway. It is the small go-kart style cars that you can drive around the track. I actually do think the theme is really cute and what you see on the track, it's kind of like a showcase for the future um, as you're driving around, but that's not top of my list. Probably the most popular thing to do in Tomorrowland is of course Space Mountain. However, this is the rare occasion where I prefer the Disney World version to the Disneyland version, which is controversial. The Disneyland version has different music and you sit side by side as opposed to solo. It's also much, much smoother, which means most people like it. But for me, the nostalgia lies with the OG Space Mountain and the crickety back adjustment that you get every time in the Magic Kingdom. You've got a couple more attractions in Tomorrowland. You've got Star Tours, the Adventures Continue TM. Yes, the same as the one in Disney's Hollywood Studios. It lives here. You've got Astro Orbiter, which basically sits on Main Street, but that's your kind of rocket ship 
spin around ride, um, except for it starts on the ground. So it's not quite as thrilling as it is in Disney World because you don't start high up. And then you've got Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters. This is Disneyland's version of Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. As far as eating goes, you've got Pizza Planet, which I do love as a Toy Story fan. It is themed to the Pizza Planet in the films. It's big slices of pizza, not the puffy pizza, and it's not bad. It's not as good as a lot of other food in Disneyland, but it's not the worst pizza I've ever had in a theme park. Looking at you, Pinocchio's Village Hoss. There's also the Galactic Grill, which is kind of your more classic theme park fare. Uh, you're gonna find burgers and sandwiches, so that's not gonna top my list either. So what's the winner? Well, it's probably not that surprising as Buzz Lightyear's number one fan, that it's Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters. Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters is the Disneyland version of Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, but there's a few key differences. For starters, the targets actually light up when you hit them, so you know where you're aiming. Number two, you can actually pick the laser gun up, which makes it a lot easier to shoot. And number three, the targets have different shapes. Certain shapes are worth more, so you can actually know which targets you should be aiming for, as opposed to in Disney World, where you kind of have to just know from reading or learning or watching a show like ours, you know which targets are worth more. So I think this is the better version of the attraction, plus it stars my main man Buzz Lightyear, plus I love the rewritability of attractions like these, because you can always try and beat your opponent or better your score, so let's go see how we do. Well, friends, that takes us through all nine lands here at Disneyland, my favorite park in the United States, my favorite Disney park I've ever been to. It's just the OG, the original. Had the hardest decisions I've had to make in any of these videos so far because I just love so much about Disneyland. I didn't even mention some of the park-wide things I love about Disneyland, like the Magic Happens parades, the fireworks, the Roasty Toasties, little popcorn guys, the music boxes. This park is just so special and I love being here so much. Felt like a good mix of attractions and snacks and a couple underrated little secret things peppered in as well. Definitely let me know your favorite thing about Disneyland down in the comments. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come hang out with us in Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly and it has been so, so magical. Now go watch the Disneyland Secrets video. Bye.